And oftentimes, I see this a lot with a lot of different companies just across the board is they don't utilize email marketing like at all. And if they do, they're just blasting it to the entire list the entire time and it burns it out and then they ruin their domain and it ends up being a disaster. And then they're like, wow, email marketing doesn't work. And so this is like a testament that it does. It works very effectively if you know how to do it. Everyone, this is Mark DeGranis, the president of Digital Marketer, and this is the podcast that keeps you up to date on everything you need to know when it comes to digital marketing, from the platforms you focused on to the kind of tactics and tools that are working today. Today, our guest is EJ Saunders, the CEO and founder of Blaze Digital Solutions, also a certified partner here at Digital Marketer, and uh, one of our newest faculty members that's going to be helping us out with a bunch of new content and courses. He's also coming up with a, a presentation that he'll be delivering at uh, the TNC. So. A bunch of stuff's coming from EJ. Uh, we love him. He has tons of practical solutions. He's an awesome marketer, and he has a ton of experience uh, really getting you know e-commerce brands, especially in the outdoor space, up and running quickly. So today, what we're going to talk about is a $100,000 uh, 30-day campaign that he ran for one of these e-commerce brands and kind of how he put together and why it was so effective. So welcome, EJ. Hey, how's it going? Thanks. All right. So that, uh, you know, we actually just talked about it briefly before we got started, but it's an archery company, uh, which I love because it's so targeted with your your niche that you serve. Uh, and a hundred thousand bucks. I mean, that's uh, that's a good start to email marketing. So how did that happen? Yeah, it was a great start to our engagement with the company, too. So that was our first 30 days in uh, the engagement that we had. So it definitely blew the, blew the socks off of everybody. <laughs> uh the big thing, man, the, the one thing that we really kind of like dive into is like the issue, like where's the hole, where's the thing that we can kind of plug to the fastest, right? Um, they're an archery company, so they do arrows and rodheads and, and parts and things like that. So it's not the easiest thing to run ads against. Um, we get restricted a lot, but they did have a list of 20,000 people on their email list. And they email maybe once, once, maybe twice a month if they were lucky. Um, and oftentimes, I see this a lot with a lot of different companies just across the board is they don't utilize email marketing like at all. And if they do, they're just blasting it to the entire list the entire time and it burns it out and then they ruin their domain and like it's, it ends up being a disaster and then they're like, wow, well, email marketing doesn't work. And so this is like a testament that it does. It works very effectively if you know how to do it. Um, and so uh, one, the one thing that we kind of looked at was how viable is this 20, you know, 20,000 person list. So as we kind of dove into that, we realized that there's a good chunk of those people that were actually purchased in the past from them. And so we started to immediately segment the list based off of people who have made a purchase and people who have not made a purchase. And then we continue to segment based off of like, well, over the last 30 or 60 days, who actually opened and engaged with an email and then who didn't. And so we, we immediately started segmenting the list um, in that fashion. Then we created an offer. So we went in and we said, okay, what is going to be the most effective way for somebody who has not made a purchase to actually come in and make a purchase? And so we put together just a really simple new customer offer. It was like a, a 10 or 15% off. And then they we added a couple other components to it. And then we set up some automations. So we started with the welcome series and then we went to the abandoned car se series. And then we had to set up a browse abandonment. And then we went in and optimized um, some of the current flows that they actually did have a couple flows going, but we optimized those to be able to, be able to utilize the segments of the audiences and the did a win back campaign as well. And so as we did that, we launched and within the first weekend, we had like $1,600 worth of sales within the first weekend of us launching the, the initial like um, campaign to, to get people into the welcome series. And so we knew right off that we, we hit the mark on the offer. And so we just continued to to do that again and again. And then we created a campaign to then uh, increase the amount of people that are on the list. And you can do that very effectively just with 
simple lead gen campaigns, no matter what the industry is, like we do it all the time. I'm doing it right now for an air gun company. I'm running ads on Facebook and, and Google and all that kind of stuff. It's just the way that you utilize the platforms for the purpose that you want to achieve at the end. And so in a nutshell, that's really what we did in that first 30 days. And it generated $100,000 worth of revenue. And so it, I think for one, it comes down to the offer. And then two, it comes down to how you're segmenting and how you're communicating with those segments to be able to take those actions. And so just really simply. That was it. <laughs> but I mean, you make it sound a little slightly easier than it is because every piece of that is a lot of work. But I think, you know, just starting from the the beginning, uh, there are a lot of these e-commerce brands that are out there that have never done email marketing at all. I mean, even one to two emails a month is still better than a lot of companies that I've talked to that are like, oh, no, I don't want to spam them. I don't want them to think I want their money. <laughs> it's like, but you do want their money. And on top of that, if they're past customers, they've already started a financial relationship. You know, we always talk about with the, the customer value journey, it's all about conversion, right? But conversion is only halfway through the journey. It's okay, now you set up that financial relationship. Now you get them excited about about making that purchase. Now you can ascend them. And so I think that's um, you know, silly number one is that you know, asking if you're you're providing value more value for somebody who's already started the relationship is obvious, uh, but it is difficult. So was, did you have to have that that talk with the company to say like, hey, we're going to start sending a lot more emails? Uh, was there any pushback or did they kind of say like, oh, okay, whatever, do your thing? The owner was actually very responsive to the strategy because we were able to educate him along the way and kind of give him like on paper of like, this is what we're thinking. This is what we want to do and why we want to do it. And then if it works, then you're going to love us. If it doesn't work, hey, we can change direction and no harm, no foul on that front. But the strategy, I think, was pretty sound. So he kind of gave us, he was like, yeah, let's do it. If we can, need, you know, we needed to ramp up the amount of emails and stuff that we were running anyways, because they weren't running anything. So there was a warm up period that even happened during that period, you know, we're running emails through Klaviyo. And so, yeah, they're definitely a lot of work. I mean, some of these automations too were like multiple emails, right? So some of the automations that he had set up only had like one or two emails in the mix where we built it out and it was like you know, seven, right? Four, seven, six, you know, and so when they were a lot more comprehensive and a lot more directed on like, how do we get this person to move from one spot to the next? I think that's one thing that a lot of marketers even a lot of business owners kind of miss is they overlook the micro steps. And so like with, the, with our five level framework that we actually derive directly from the customer value journey, it's like just to the convert stage really, but it's like, okay, how do we get somebody from one step to the next? What is that call to action? What is that piece of content that we need to deliver in order for that thing to happen? Is it a testimonial? Is it, you know, a brand anthem style video to get them just pumped and excited. Is it, you know, just a product, uh, just, you know, more of a product description or product like deep dive um, on that front. A lot of people, they just kind of skip over all those steps because they just want to just show something and for people to just buy. And it goes a lot deeper than that just because of the way that we're inundated so much with advertising and all this kind of stuff that people need that relationship built. And people don't understand like how important that is, especially in the in the marketing and the advertising space, um, whether you're running emails or your ads or running print material, that process needs to happen more today than I think ever before. And that just all comes down to the way you communicate and how you solve their problems in such a direct way. And you know, if that makes any sense at all. Oh yeah. Oh, well, it does to me. <laughs> no, but I, I think, well, you say direct, but I think, uh, you know, another word for it is obvious. Like it needs to be not uh, hidden, your agenda. And I think, you know, the you, what you're really describing is just being in, really intentional with those communications and having an understanding, which, you know, if, if you take people out of the marketing, you know, take your marketing hat off and you're just like, how do you experience brands and how do you make decisions to purchase something? Me personally, like my my decision making process for buying anything over like a hundred dollars is ranges from like a month 
to like a year. Like I'll think about something for that long. So unless there's a brand that's willing to cater to my style of purchasing, I'll just be like, well, I don't know who you are. You're not a recommendation from a friend. And really what we're talking about here is cold. Yeah, it's, well, it's not quite cold traffic because you have past customers who have already given you money. So you know you know what they want. But you know, just from a you know the new perspective, I think it's uh, if you aren't walking them through that excitement phase of the customer value journey, which is really the welcome series that you described, then how, how could the customer possibly know what to do? They're not going to research you. They're, if you can't provide the offer that they need, the solution they need immediately, if that's your marketing, your, your kind of direct marketing intention, then they're, they're not interested. But if instead you got a little deeper into the you know motivations or the you know inspiration to buy something prior to that, which you know in terms of the archery company might be, hey, uh, you know, how many times have you broken your arrow when you shot it? And did you know that that doesn't have to happen if you use the right materials to buy your blah, 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 or to, to you know, make your arrows? Now they're interested in you because you're interested in the process or the, the problems that they're facing right now. And even though they might be not ready to buy right now, now they're interested. So uh, with that said, how, how do you really think the yeah, how do you how do you formulate the welcome series? Because I think that's a huge pivotal step that that a lot of brands miss. Yeah, so obviously the it all comes down to like what you're getting somebody to opt in for, you know, and having a direct reason for them to want to even give their information to you. And so I'll kind of throw another example that's still in the outdoor space, but it's for broadheads. Um, which is even more like segmented or probably just as segmented as, as the arrows. But what we did was we kind of put this, the broadhead package together, but then we added like educational material to it. Right. And so it's like, Hey, get access to this, like, you know, to the top 10 tips that is going to make you like this awesome, you know, archer, it's going to increase your accuracy. You're going to do like all of these things. Right. And adding like those components to it. So they're opting in for that. They might be opting in for the discount, but they're going to get these extra pieces as well that makes it even more enticing to where they're going to be like, okay, yeah, the discount's cool because everybody gives me a discount. But these other things that are, they're adding to it makes it way more valuable because I'm actually going to be able to improve my game. I'm actually going to be able to be more successful um, in my endeavors this year. So yes, I'm going to use their arrows, but they're teaching me how to best use their arrows. That's going to make me, you know, hundred percent more uh, proficient, efficient, effective, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so that's really like, it's really built into the offer. And so when we do that, they opt in to, to receive that discount code and to, to get that material. And then we walk through that education material, but we're highlighting the different aspects, you know, of, of their arrows and the products and, and really just kind of nailing down the the reason why they opted in to begin with. Does that make sense? But we're always providing that next step along the way. And so whether if it's education, if it's just a sole discount, we still highlight different things. Like, um, and I'll highlight like Scree, for example. So some of their welcome series entails different influencers and their gear recommendations, right? So it's not scree given the recommendation it's these other guys given those recommendations for for the piece of gear for that time of year for that specific hunt you know whatever that is and so we really tried to hone in to build that value as much as we possibly can in the welcome series because i think like you said like the experience that people have is the most important thing in this whole this you know this whole marketing journey um, and that experience needs to just hit it hard on the actor state, like plainly put. Oh, yeah. Well, and it, it sounds obvious when you say it like, yeah, you want to show people how to use your product. But I think that's uh, there's a disconnect. And, and the disconnect is really I found on like ROI where it's like, well, yeah, we're educating them on the product. But what about their next purchase? Like, why are we talking about the next thing they could buy? And and again, it just goes back to that journey. It, you will do that. <laughs> you know, it's you will ascend them. That's part of the process, but you can't get there just by wanting to be there. You know, we always talk about the, you know, half-built bridges and 
you know, how do you get somebody from their before state to the their after state? And most of the time, you know, there's many stages in between that. And if you try to skip over those stages and just be like, ah, oh, that's why people end up setting, you know, defaulting to just promotions constantly, right? It's like, wow, we got to sell this. So let's go ahead and push this out. We'll give a discount. We'll do free shipping. We'll do whatever, which is good. And you got to do that. But that's one expensive because when you discount your product, you're t- immediately taking away margin, right? Like it it looks at like the 20% off coupon or the 30% off coupon. It's like, yeah, that's off the top. (laughs) Like that's off of retail. And if your margin is 35%, now you just annihilated your margin. And unless you have the Ascension plan, which is the next stage of the process, then you're just shooting yourself in the foot. And why not keep that profit, you know, right now? And you can do that through the welcome series. 100%. Hey everyone, I want to quickly interrupt the podcast for a special announcement. If you're listening to this podcast because you want to become a better marketer, then I want to share with you what I believe to be the most comprehensive digital marketing program on the market today. It's called the Digital Marketing Mastery Certification. You'll learn to leverage the tools and channels to predictably and profitably drive awareness, leads, sales, and referrals. Everything you need to know to become a true master of digital marketing. We'll take an in-depth look at the core digital marketing competencies, including content, email, social media, community, digital advertising, data and optimization, and more. After earning your digital marketing strategy certificate, you'll have the tools to effectively reach your target audience through a full scope marketing strategy. Get started today at digitalmarketer.com slash strategy cert. And the cool thing too is, is when you develop those offers, you can still provide discounts. So like with the broadheads, we put together their standard broadhead and we kept it the broadhead price at the same price, right? But then we added like these education, these digital products of like the education and then the warranty and the 30 day guarantee and like all of those things, right? And, or we did, we did offer 10% off your next purchase if you buy that particular bundle, right? But we were able to increase the price of that bundle by like $10. And then we discounted it down to the regular price of the broadheads. But that bundle, there's, you know, they're getting 20% off of that valuable bundle, but it doesn't take any margin at all away from the actual product. We're just adding more value to it. Well, and more volume, you know, in terms of sales too, because when you do do the the bundling or the packages or the special deals where you, you know, lump all these products together, now somebody who might have just bought one thing is now like, well, I could buy the one thing, but I'm stupid if I don't, you know, buy this other thing that I'm I'm going to eventually buy anyways. And so you're making, uh, you're actually getting into the the purchasing pro, you know, process of the buyer where they're like, yeah, it makes more sense for me to do this. And like you were describing that irresistible offer that, that everybody, you know, the Alex and Rosie book, <laughs> the $100 million offer, I think I've heard that so much. And I'm like, oh my God, it's so true though, because it, unless it's irresistible, I'm not going to make that purchase right now. And then even for my kind of long form purchasing process that I use personally, like that will make me take action. I'm like, wow, if I don't do it right now, then I could lose it. You know, I'm going to be, I basically wasted a thousand dollars, let's say like, because it's so discounted right now. And I have to make that decision now because what else could I do with a thousand dollars? I'll do something else. With so I love that. Well, the focus on the offer, that's huge. Let's just quickly go through like all the campaigns though, because you, you know, you said the email campaign, but you had the welcome series, you have the abandoned cart series, uh, was the abandoned web page, like somebody who, who landed on the landing page and the left bounced off. Yep. Browse abandonment. I'm actually going to log in to Clavio and we're going to pull up the different campaigns here. Love it. Well, and, and let's, let's say this. How long did it take to set up all of this? Because you had to make the offer. You had to, uh, you know, collect the emails, find out what kind of segmentation they were currently doing. Then you had to construct the email series for all the different emails. Was that a month process or what led up to the final, like, okay, we're going? The way we kind of onboard it is before we actually sign them on, we do like an audit per se, right? We call it a revenue growth plan because we're, with the audit, we're going to build an actual plan that over the next 90 days, this is how we're going to generate X amount of revenue. Um, and our, our motive is to generate, at least put a plan together that's going to generate at least double what their investment is with us over the 90 day period. So if they invest, you know, seventy five hundred dollars with us over ninety days. We want to generate at least fifteen thousand in in revenue. And so what we found has 
has really cultivated. So before we even onboarded them, we got access to, to all their platforms, everything. These companies, they'll, they'll put a thousand dollars down payment and then they'll give us access to all of the platforms. We then create that plan to begin with. So before we even start, we know exactly what we're going to do, how we're going to go about doing it, how viable some of these things are. So by the time we hit the ground running, within the first five days, we had like the first three automations already built out and um, sent over the, to them to, you know, to approve, so to speak. And then once those were approved, we started sending some broadcasts out and then continued building automations, you know, over time. So that's kind of the the flow of of it. And I think it really builds trust with clients. I know like a lot of agency owners out there, like, I can't tell you how many times I've heard people say, like, I just don't trust agencies. I think they're all just a bunch of garbage. They're just full of fluff. They promise all this stuff and they never deliver, like all of those things, right? And so it's my way of kind of like shifting that is like, well, let's create a plan. And then, you know, if we can do this, you, you know, then you know the likelihood of us you know, actually executing and actually creating that revenue for you is going to be a lot greater because we're all going to be bought into the process right from the very, very beginning. That's awesome. Well, and I think it's it's a testament to to having a plan too, because I think the reason why the, a lot of agencies get this uh, you know portrayal of like oh they never deliver is because they just spent a month, maybe more than a month, prospecting this this new customer, and they spent all this time and effort making promises, and oh, we're going to do this, we're going to do this, and then when it comes time to like, hey, here's money, then they're like, all right, we get a start, and then they come up with this custom process, and the collecting the information takes forever, and getting the buy-in of the client takes forever, and then now it's three months later, they haven't started a campaign they're still talking about stuff and no action has actually been taken. Then what happens is both sides are frustrated. And even if they do make a campaign that works, it's taken three to six months. And now the client's very unhappy because they've been paying that entire time waiting for results. And it sounds like what you do is you just flip that over and be like, nope, here's the plan. Here's exactly what we're going to do. You know the information we need. Here we go. I'm sure you have some template, you know, templatized kind of, uh, you know, drip series and email series, which makes it easy to customize, switch it over, and you know exactly what you're getting into. And I love the the focus on getting that result. You know, like here's the target. You're giving us this much money, you're gonna get this much money back. Or that's what we're aiming for. And now you can do whatever you want. You finally get you earned the trust that you needed to, you know, do the next campaign and keep them as a long term client and get them results forever. And they trust you. And I, I'm guessing this is just my uh, assumption is that they bug you less. Is that is that true after you have a big success? Yes. Yeah, they do. Yep. I mean, they'll they'll come at us and be like, "Wow, well, our our weeks a little bit slower than last week. Is there anything that broke or anything? Is everything okay?" You know, that's more of the the questioning versus like, "You guys aren't doing your job. Like, what the heck am I paying you for?" Like all this stuff. There, it's more of like a concern of like, "Hey, is." Do we need to jump on a call? Do we need to kind of readjust some things or whatever? It's more of a discussion than it is like a complaint or anything like that. So yeah, it's definitely way more positive, like way more positive. So, and I like being on that side of the fence with clients than, than the latter stuff. So. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, it's, uh, it's tough because it, when they get to that level of actually speaking up, like, Hey, I'm dissatisfied with your service. Like they're actually been like that for a while at least and they've been working up the courage to talk to you about it because every time they bring up the oh hey when's something gonna happen you know you're like well you did you know the the, the normal agency response is well you guys didn't get us this we need access to that yeah this didn't happen and blah and then they push it back on the client like this is really it's your fault it's not my fault it's your fault and so and nobody wants to hear that even if that's the truth <laughs> you know they want to hear what can you do and what have you done and why should I keep on giving you money? So I think uh, your entire process sounds fantastic. And and while it is kind of complicated, it does take some some work to like, you know, you kind of talked about bundling a service, but that entire process telling a company that, hey, here's how you currently sell crap. I need you to make an entirely new product that I'm going to recommend based on this awesome offer that's going to get you a bunch of results. 
that's still, it takes, uh, you know, some hand holding and some confidence on the agency's part to go to a business owner and say this, but at the end of the day, that's your job. So I think you, you really described a process that, that almost any business can use, especially e-commerce businesses. But, uh, I know you pulled up your screen. So why, why don't you just walk us through like the exact, you know, things that you set up in order to achieve that hundred thousand dollar month. Yep. So first thing was obviously the welcome series. So we have the welcome series. We really introduce like welcome to the serious archery family, then go into the the quality of the products and and all of those uh, different aspects that we've kind of talked to. So we actually did a split test on two different welcome series as well, um, right from the get. So we have our version one and version two of of the welcome series. We have these three different welcome series, but this was more for uh, a giveaway. So we do a lot of giveaways and that's actually what I'm going to be talking at TNC is how to structure and how to run those giveaways to, to generate a return. A lot of people don't expect a return. They think giveaways are crap. That's just a little plug for TNC. Um, but we have these two welcome series that we started with. Obviously this one won, and you can see here some of the revenue that's generated just in the last I think it's the last seven days, but we have these, everybody who's kind of placed an order, we did kind of run a little bit there. So you can see, we've kind of ran some stuff. We've taken some stuff off. We, what we, we do a lot of AB testing. So you can see here, the abandoned cart, we have two different versions of it and we let the one run and it's amazing. I'll kind of, this is going to be a little, a little sneak peek. So as you can see, this, this one isn't a whole lot of it. It's very yeah, simple. Two emails. I want to sh kind of show you what this looks like, right? And the, the cool thing is that there's really no images, you know, very little creative put into these. And I think this is one of the things that we kind of really pride ourselves on. And, and it's actually something I, I took from the digital marketer crew of like, how can we send emails that just don't, you know, we can try to eliminate as many images as we possibly can so long as the client buys in on it, right? Uh, but when we do that, deliverability goes up and conversion rate goes up. As you can see here, like usually in abandoned cart, you're going to have all sorts of images and different things for the products that they left in the cart and all that kind of stuff. Not the case. And this is the the one that won over. And then there's there's this one. I'll kind of show you the the second email here. This one does have a little more creatives, but we're really honing in on those testimonials. All right. These are awesome testimonials. Okay. It yeah, really it, works. And they're so simple too. I think that, you know, just for the the podcast listeners, you know, the email, the first email was just a, four paragraphs, a button and one headline. Uh, this email is a headline, a couple paragraphs, and then was that five or six uh reviews the review uh for four reviews they're they're beefy though i think they're you know three four sentences each awesome testimonials and then it just finishes with complete your purchase and a return to your cart button and so and then a lot of times you know i think yeah i'm a creative so i i always like oh, where's all the graphics <laughs> but it, you know like you said it affects deliverability uh makes them hard to execute because then you gotta start that conversation oh what colors you use all that kind of stuff uh, versus no, they they obviously were interested enough to put something in their cart, which is pretty interested, you know, from a buyer perspective. And so this entire chain is uh, the trigger was when someone started checking out. Then it waits five hours, and then it after the cart's been abandoned, abandoned cart email one. Don't let this slip through your fingers. And then it waits a day, so twenty one hours, and then it goes to this gear will be gone soon, and and the gone soon will be has the testimonials or reviews in it. And, and that's it. I mean, that's super simple. And so, and you can see some of these analytics too, like we oh, have 32%. open rate, 32%, click through rate, 7 to 7.2%. You know, we get more money off of this first email than we did on the second email, which means that that first email is pretty good. And it's all just text. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of a, well, and the cool thing is, because I, I think there's a lot of analysis of like the copy, like, oh, you know, I got to make sure the copy's right too. But at the end of the day, it really, somebody was already interested enough to put it in their cart. And that's, that's a huge 
component of uh, the next step. And then you just remind them like, hey, did you know? Because I mean, I'm sure there's a certain amount of people who just didn't check out. Like I, I do that too. You know, where I'm like, I do all the process just to find how much it's going to be. And then I don't make a decision then. So all you have to do is remind people sometimes. Yep. So in this welcome series too, I wanted to dive into this because we have a really high open rate and a really high click through rate. 80%. So 80% open rate. We have a 72%. This is over the last 30 days. 70, 27.2% click through rate. And then we have a 25% placed order rate, conversion rate. So the trigger for the, okay. So the, the trigger is just somebody subscribing to the newsletter. That's it. And then they get these seven emails and it converts to 25%. That's, that's amazing. And on the first email. On the first that's email. That's just the first email, right? So just to kind of get a little peek into to this email, there's, there is some stuff here, you know, some creatives for you creatives out there, but we really dive in to the, the discount here, but you can see how much copy we have going into this. Yeah. Um, that got just some pictures, got some in. products. And then there's some products in there, but it really dives into, you know, the quality, strength, like all of those things. These guys, you know, the types of arrows and different things, they, they really are like a pioneer in the engineering and different things behind it, which makes it a lot easier to sell this product. But that's amazing. Yeah, but even then, it's not Fairly super simple. complicated. Yeah, and twenty five percent conversion. That's that's incredible. Yeah, <laughs> I think so too. I think it's it's pretty crazy. And then we wait three days, and you know the order place rate on that second one jumps down to one point nine. But we're still generating revenue all along the way. We're still generating revenue. You know, and we still have a really high. So we get three emails in, and our open rate still fifty four percent, and our click through rates at four point eight percent. That's amazing. Kind of dive into this, but really like the automations are really such an important piece, especially the welcome series. I think the welcome series is probably the most important uh, automation or flow that you can create because it sets up such strong expectations for how, you know, the stuff you're going to get in the future. And it's really setting up for the relationship. So you can see here, there's not as much copy, which in my mind is probably why it doesn't work as well. And because, you know, the conversion rate is so high on that first one. But it's still pretty simple. Yeah. Nothing super oh, crazy, enough. but we are diving into this, right? Getting ready to elevate your arrow crafting skills. And so there's there's a lot of things we're kind of just building upon what we started with in the beginning. Love it. No, it, that seems clean, simple, gets done in a week. And now, you know, I think the, the audience knows that you don't just have you know, good products and some discounts, but you have some some real valuable information that'll be useful for them doing everything. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's it. And so there's, we created some automations here. The browse abandonment, again, is pretty, I don't know. Oh, this was more. There's some complication to this one, as you can see. <laughs> that's neat. Well, I think, yeah, yeah, maybe what we'll do is have you, uh, you know, create kind of your, I don't know, email essentials for e-commerce businesses because, yeah. you know, like you said, it's, there's nothing crazy complicated here. There's no, you know, uh, insane marketing hacks and things like that. It's just some basic follow-up for somebody who is already interested and now you can get that conversion. But the, the welcome search, man, I, I didn't, you know, I was expecting like seven emails and all this, you know, kind of complicated stuff, but it's, now it's keeping it to the basics, getting those automations going and then, testing different parameters, but just having them in the first place and keeping it super basic is is way ahead of most companies. So very yeah. impressive. I love this. So pretty standard stuff. Uh, we do get into a little little bit here. It's just, you know, there is some stuff where we're using some conditional statements and this one kind of dives in a little bit deeper based on, again, it's it's based on like engagement. A lot of the, the other types of automations that we kind of roll like with the browser abandonment it's really based on like how they interact and the things that they click on and all that kind of stuff which will lead to the different different flows of things and obviously sms everybody's got to be using sms oh yeah we'll definitely right? have you back on for that because i think sms is is huge and it's really you know and again i, I always use myself as the uh the buyer even though i'm super weird about my purchasing patterns uh, the sms is 
super important because the people aren't checking emails as much. I think now that that some of the other methods of marketing have kind of, uh, you know, are less effective than they used to be, specifically SEO organic traffic is very unpredictable at this point. Then a lot of companies are starting to rely on the, on email marketing again, which means it's more competitive, more emails going out, more, uh, you know, drive for attention. So unless you have this kind of automated follow-up that doesn't wait a month to get back to somebody, but is immediate and useful and valuable, then now you can increase your conversion rate. You get big wins for your clients if you're an agency, and you'll elevate the entire profession of marketing because you'll be delivering value right off the bat. So I think you are a testament to how agencies should work and uh, really appreciate your time, AJ. Uh, next time, we'll, we'll definitely talk about SMS and all that kind of stuff, but in the meantime, where can people learn more? Yeah, it's good. Appreciate it, man. So blazedigitalsolutions.com is a website for us. If you want to learn a little more about me personally, ejsaunders.com is my my personal website and kind of got cranked up a few of the other partners and Dennis and those guys have got me rock and rolling with some of that stuff. So yeah, I'm starting to be all over the place. So you can always find me on Instagram, Twitter, or X, I guess, LinkedIn. I'm kind of bouncing all along the threads as well. So typically at the at EJ Saunders official. Awesome. Bob, I really appreciate your time as always, EJ. I think you're you're doing some awesome things and you're an excellent example for you know what's possible with agencies. So I definitely recommend everybody follow you. And uh, again, we'll have you back on uh, very soon to talk about those other topics because uh, you have the evidence. You you do the things you say you're going to do and, and it works. So we really appreciate what you're doing out there. Yeah, man. No problem. Appreciate you having me. All right. Thank you so much for listening. Be sure to hit that follow button so you get notified when all of our new episodes release. Please share this with a friend who's clueless about digital marketing. And don't forget to visit digitalmarketer.com where you can access all of our courses, certifications, and training programs. Thanks again, everyone, and we'll see you next time.